you're being recorded. All right. Um, I'm going to start off with competitive markets. And um, just to know in competitive markets, there's many buyers and sellers. So if one buyer leaves, it's going to have no effect on the market. If one seller leaves, it's going to have no effect on the market. Okay. So like they like to ask those questions, like if one seller leaves in a competitive market, what happens to price? Nothing. Price doesn't change. Okay. So um, again, many buyers and sellers, you want one of those? So that um, if one leaves, really no impact. Okay. And then there's, he talks a little about competition, perfect and otherwise. Just know like a monopoly is a market with only one, like one seller. And an oligopoly is a market with two to 10. I mean, wait, what's the other one called? Monopoly is one seller. Yeah. Oligopoly, O L I G O P O L Y, is two to 10. That's kind of something guys miss. All right. Then you have um, the law of demand. And all the law of demand says is there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity. Okay. All right. And then quantity demanded is the amount of goods buyers are willing and able to purchase. The amount of goods buyers are willing and able to purchase. What I think you really need to remember in quantity demanded is price changes quantity demanded. So if we're looking at, at this, and actually there would be, so if we, you know, change the price, quantity demanded would like, you know, could slide up here. So price or a change in the supply curve will change quantity demanded. Okay, those are the two things. Wait, it's price or change in supply curve. Yeah. Right. You look a little lost. Do you need something? No. Okay. You sure? Yeah. I'm here to help you. Well, okay. So changes. Oh, never mind. No. So like a supply shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Where it says. The price, I just wanted you to know that change in price, um, you know, impacts quantity demand. Income, normal goods, income up, demand up. Normal goods, income up, demand up. Inferior goods, Income up, demand down. And obviously they go the other way, right? Normal goods, income up, demand up. Inferior goods, income up, demand down. All right, substitutes. Substitutes two goods, which if the price of one good goes up, the demand of the other goes up. So two goods, which if the price of one goes up, the demand of the other goes up. So they're gonna be, you know, directly related. And that's how the questions are gonna be. Like it's gonna be good X price goes up and the quantity of good Y goes up. What type of good is it? Is it? Well, then it's a substitute because they're both going in the same direction. Complements are two goods where if the price of one goes up, the demand of the other goes down. So complements are two goods in which the price of one goes up, the, the demand of the other goes down. All 
uh, taste ex expectations. I'm going to cover that when we turn over the paper. Um, Sideris Paribus, all things being the same. And again, you'll never get tested on that, but they might put that in the question, okay? They'll never ask you to define that. All right, all right. shifters of demand. I don't even have to go over these, right? Because we've got these like on the back of our hand. All right, taste, taste and preference. T for time, taste and preference. You know, VCRs, they're kind of out. Income. I for income. So we have P for taste, I for income. The part about income that you gotta pay attention to is the normal and inferior goods. M for market size. E for expectations. Expectations seems to be confusing some of you guys. Expectations are um, kind of future changes in pricing. And then I'll you can like an example of like an expectation. Yeah. Um, if we know that the price of hamburgers are going to double next month, demand for hamburgers today increases. Okay. And related goods, which is substitutes and complements. All right. Quant and then we go to quantity supply. All right, quantity um, supply, the amount of goods sellers are willing and able to sell at a given price. The amount of goods sellers are willing and able to sell at a given price. Then the law of supply, price up, quantity supply up. So the law of supply, there's a direct relationship between price and quantity supply. Price up, quantity supply up. For price, just remember for both supply and demand, price does not shift the curve. It slides up and down the curve. So what would change quantity supply? A change in price or a shift of the demand curve. Okay. That would change quantity supply. All right. Technology, I'm going to do everything under the shifters of supply. So that's rat nest, resource prices. Anything that makes the product is a resource price. So cotton for the shirt, labor for the shirt, oil which has turned into gas to ship the shirt. All those are resource prices. A, alternative production. Can I produce cotton? I mean, do I want to produce shirts or coats? T, technology. And number of sellers. E expectations, and they're usually very good at telling you all the expectations on the producer or the consumer. Subsidies and taxes for rat. So rat nest resources, alternative technology, number of sales. Like for now, subsidies are going to shift everything right. Taxes are going to shift everything left. All right, equilibrium. Snow at the equilibrium here. That quantity supply equals quantity demanded. At a disequilibrium up here, if I'm above, I'm going to always have a surplus and there'll be pressure to drive prices down. Why? 
because if I have 10 shirts and only three people want them, I got to get my prices down to sell all of them. All right. So here, you know, quantity supply is greater than quantity demand. Okay. Then also note on the bottom is a shortage. Okay. And here, the pressure is for the prices to go up. All right. So above the equilibrium, a surplus. Below the equilibrium, a shortage. All right. Now, the three steps. One, is it a supply or a demand shift? Two, which way does the curve move? And three, the new price in equilibrium. So let's just do this on the board. Maybe I have a different slide. Okay. Okay. So, um, so you have the new price. You put new equilibrium, right? P one, Q one, and then you put your arrows. All right. Um, now, here's something they're definitely going to ask you, right? How to describe this? So this is a shift in demand, an increase in demand, a change in demand, and then an increase in quantity supply. Okay, right? Because demand shifted, so it's a change in demand and an increase in quantity supply. It's definitely going to be those types of questions. So when they say shifts in the curves or it's movement along the curves, that's what you need to do. All right. Uh, the last thing I wanted to go over was um, the double shifter. And just make sure for the double shifter that you have two graphs. What do we know about a double shifter automatically? One is indeterminate. One is indeterminate. Okay. So just graph both your graphs out. Okay. And you're not going to have to graph it. Right, and just knock out every answer that's not indeterminate. And then, you know, you just figure out which way they go. All right. Is there any questions on anything, the practice test or any, any, Mike? Can you give an example of an alternative Yeah. Like say I'm a farmer and I could go weed or corn, I'm gonna grow what makes me the most money. And then, actually, yeah. Okay, so they're saying both supply and demand increase, right? Yeah, so if I shift demand by here, I've got price up, quantity up, right? And then if I increase supply here, I have price down, quantity up. So it's going to be, I don't even, price is going to be, price may increase, decrease, or remain unchanged. Okay. Any other questions? On yes, but that's like the double shift. Of the yeah, but they it might not be. They might give an example like uh, uh, people say chocolate um, will increase your health, um, and it's about like say Snicker bars. So the demand for Snicker bars will increase, and then they could also say, and the technology of producing Snicker bars has increased. So then, you know, it's technology. Any other questions on the practice quiz? The, here's one of the things I'll tell you on the practice quiz, figure 414, that's the four graphs. 
I just know, I would know what every one of those do, right? Like the first one is an increase in demand and an increase in quantity supply. So just because those four graphs are going to be on there. All right. Same like that. They're just going to ask you different questions about it. So if you just go over them like tonight, like so they're good in your mind, then graph 410, what could they ask you besides what they did? Like they could ask you about 25. Like what is the surplus? What's going to happen to price in the long run? You know, there'll be pressure to go down. Um, at 15, what is the shortage? You know, like those two graphs will probably, those graphs will probably be on, on your actual test. So it's a way to look into it. Any other questions? Okay, just get a hundred tomorrow. The actual quiz, this could be a time of the actual quiz is easier than the redo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.